to call to the lectern the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Tantalus Games and the President of the Game Developers Association of Australia, Mr Tom Crago. Thanks very much. Welcome everybody on behalf of uh, the Game Developers Association of Australia. I'm actually going to be back at the microphone in uh, a few minutes to give an opening address, so I'll be very brief now. I really want to thank and acknowledge, uh, first of all, the sponsors of this event, especially the Victorian Government who have been a long and a generous supporter of our industry over the years and they're the primary sponsor of this event uh, again today. Uh, I want to thank Sony, Microsoft, Emergent and Autodesk, uh, actors as well, and also a number of uh, local companies who have supported uh, this event, Tantalus, Iagurus, uh, Red Tribe and Taurus. Thank you to everybody. We got underway here yesterday with uh, a few forums and seminars. We had a government roundtable yesterday morning, something we do every year, bringing together representatives from uh, all state and federal governments to talk about the issues that are facing the industry. That was a success. We had an uh, investment forum as well and a skills summit, uh, half-day sessions uh, yesterday, focusing on those, uh, those specialised areas. <coughs> Over the next couple of days, of course, we have the main program of uh, Game Connect Asia Pacific. I'm happy to say that we've got 300 uh, delegates registered for uh, the event, and we have a terrific program of uh, speakers lined up over the course of the next couple of days. Just to, to pick a few highlights, uh, Paul Holman, of course, and his team from uh, SCEE, we want to thank them uh, for making the journey down to Melbourne. Uh, Pete Asensi from Microsoft, Matt Costello, Sakimoto-san and uh, Kaneko-san uh, from Japan who are joining us this weekend. Uh, Dave Glenn and Chris Wells. And a very strong contingent of uh, local developers who are going to be talking to you over the next couple of days about uh, titles that have been developed in development in Australia uh, this year. And I know that that's something that was very important to the organising committee of the conference this year, to look at the titles that we've been working on locally to pick the key people who have contributed to the success of those titles and to have them uh, come here and talk to you about their efforts. This is not a, a business show, as you know. The focus is very much on uh, development and on very specific technical art and design streams. We do, however, have a number of representatives from uh, publisher organisations from, from all around the world, and they are here to meet with developers and to put uh, development deals together. We have uh, representatives here from Sony and Microsoft, who I mentioned, IDOS, Konami, Midway, Red Mile, Sega and 2K. So many of the world's leading publishers sending representatives here to Melbourne to meet with our local Australian <coughs> development studios. A couple more things. Uh, I want to remind everybody about the awards dinner that's being held tomorrow. It really is the, the biggest event in uh, the video game year for the Australian industry. We present awards over a variety of categories. Uh, you've probably heard the nominees. I'll touch on some of them in my address uh, later. There are still a few tickets available for the event. The registrations close at uh, lunchtime today. So if you do want to get along to the awards session, uh, please go to the registration desk by uh, lunchtime today and you should be able to get yourself a ticket. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Randall Straw, who is the Executive Director of Multimedia Victoria. Randall has been involved in uh, the video game industry for many, many years, has been a great supporter of the industry and it's my pleasure to introduce him now to officially open Game Connect Asia Pacific. Good morning and welcome. Um, you have a bureaucrat talking here today because my minister's overseas who would normally come and open this, so apologies from him, but he would have liked to be here, but um, overseas duties always take precedent, they do with politicians. Uh, welcome again and welcome to Melbourne, who, and we would say one of the most livable cities in the world. And the Victorian Government's happy to be a major sponsor of this Games conference. And I'd like to tell you why. There's two things I want to... There's a couple of messages I want to leave you. One is why the Victorian Government sees this as important and what the Victorian Government sees as challenges for you as an industry we do. 
first thing is, why do we see you as important? If you actually think about what Detroit's economy is going to look like in the future, the following words we use. We use the words innovation, we use the words creative, we use the words knowledge, and we use the words skills-based. We don't use things like resources. That's just not what the Victorian economy is about. And we actually think the games industry or the game subsector fits that bill in two ways in regards to meeting those sort of words. One is games as a subsector itself is a creative industry and it's a growth industry. You guys over the last five years since we've been supporting you have doubled in size in Victoria and we see that as good. We do. The other thing is the skills and talents you guys bring to the economy is not just important for the entertainment sector, it's important for the capability across the entire economy. You know, five years ago, we probably ten to five, five to ten years ago, we talked about the blurring of the film and TV sector and the games sector. We start now to talk about the blurring of the games sector with serious industries like education, like defence, like other creative areas. So the blurring there, you, you guys bring a capability and a talent to be able to grow those areas in new ways as well. So we actually see that as the two reasons why we see you guys as important and why over the last four or five years we've probably put four to five million dollars into this subsect that we have. And we think it's been worth it. And we will probably continue to provide some level of funding to this sector as well. Um, the other thing um, I'd like to talk about is just briefly what do we see as your major challenges as well around going forward. And I have, have a list of four here. One is about owning your own IP. All right? It's an area where you guys for a long time have been contract houses for overseas shops, and that's fine. It is, but we also see a need for you guys to be able to own your IP, exploit it, and actually make more bucks and get greater wealth in, in this area. That's why we've put money into things like prototyping funds with the Digital Media Fund to try and promote those sorts of things. The second one is exchange rates. I think it's probably an industry, an area where this will hurt this industry to start off with, the strength of the Australian dollar. It's something I can't control and the government can't control, but it's something you have to work through as an industry. Third one is skills. Um, and I'm glad a key, um, a key theme around this conference is skills. Um, I, I look after a broad range of technology sectors in IT and we are supply constrained. You know, our IT industry in Victoria has grown by 20,000 people in the last three years. I'm supply constrained. I could grow it by another 10 if I could get kids interested in technology careers and produce more graduates. It is. And we put a lot of money into trying to change images around IT and you guys are actually at the forefront of it and you might not think you're part of the IT industry and you actually think probably more part of the entertainment industry, but we use you people as the sort of role models that we want people to look forward to in the future we do, try and build an image and try and show them why they need to move into technology-based careers. And the last one is investment. Everyone needs bucks into this, and I've got to congratulate the GDAA in regards to getting the issue around you guys being recognised the same way as film and TV in regards to investment rebates. Um, obviously, you've put it now on the agenda of both political parties and I think that's an important step and it's something that can bring a lot more bucks into your industry and get you better slopes for the future years it can. So well done the GDAA on that. Um, and on a more sober note as well, the last me message I want to give you is the GDAA has done a wonderful job over the last five years keeping you guys together. I put money into this lot and I have continued to put money into this lot. But with everything, governments eventually vacate fields around economic development. When you start getting out of being a nascent industry, moving into a more mature lot, governments move out of those fields and a lot. So my message to you is you need to support these guys. You need to fund and create your own destiny, and governments can assist, but we actually can't lead. So my message to you is keep Keep getting behind these guys, growing your association, because that's what makes you a single voice to government, not disparate companies, it is. Um, so, um, well done again to the GDAA for pulling this together, and Greg and Tom, and we've worked with them 